Why on earth would you bring an unprecedented number of people from the Muslim world into Europe? Why would you do it? Osama. Because the free movement of peoples is also one of our core values in Europe, and we believe in universal human rights. European values of liberty, equality, fraternity are not just European or Western ones. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we'll be checking out a video where Douglas Murray is one of the speakers titled How Britain Reacts to the Attacks in Paris. Wow. I believe this is going to be an interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. Douglas, do we have to give up a bit of our liberty in order to increase our protection? No, I don't think so. No, I pretty much agree with everything that's just been said by by Peter and a lot of what's just been said by Yasmin, I think that you have to be very careful after these events that you don't leap around, as you say, become hyperactive about it. And I also think that there is a, a, a huge problem of rhetoric from politicians about this. We'll see whether uh, President Hollande is indeed merciless towards ISIS. Uh, we'll see whether uh, instead we don't have a phase like I think we've had in the UK and I think we've arguably had across Europe where whenever we talk about this subject, our politicians do an extraordinary mix of grandiosity and tinkering. Well, the word they war say we are at we, They say we are at war with an existential threat, and it is the threat of our time. And then they say, and in response, um, we must extend um, uh, surveillance here, or we must do this, we must do that. Mm. This is not up to the challenge. If you accept that the challenge is there, and I think that it is, if you accept that it is that, then you do not simply tinker. What do you do? Well, all sorts of things. One of the things, by the way, and it has to be said, one of the things, you would make sure you knew who was coming into your country and you knew who was here. And it is insane that in recent years, at the same time as saying there is an element within Islamic communities, whatever percentage you think it is, which has the potential to be radicalised, which has the potential to have these medieval ideas, if you believe that is true, and now the mainstream politicians across Europe all say that is true, why on earth would you bring an unprecedented number of people from the Muslim world into Europe? Why would you do it? Osama. Because the free movement of peoples is also one of our core values in Europe, and we believe in universal human rights. European values of liberty, equality, fraternity are not just European or Western ones. They are Muslim ones as well. The vast majority of the Muslim world, the very young population, they are polled, and they want these kinds of values. But they don't want dictators and many of them are escaping terrorist groups like ISIS by coming in right. into Europe and by by showing them that generosity we are actually undermining the terrorist narrative who, who are trying to pit uh, them against us so we actually have to stick to our principles and values and, 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 and welcome uh, strangers and refugees the, the vast majority will con contribute to the society we have to deal with the terrorist military threat of ISIS absolutely we are at war with them Osama, you, n nobody wants you to be right more than I do. Okay, Take a poll that came out earlier this year. The BBC conducted it after the Charlie Hebdo massacre, the last massacre in Paris. The BBC poll said that 27% of British Muslims polled said they had sympathy with the attackers in Paris. 27%. It's not a majority. I grant you, it's just a quarter. It's just a quarter. We have to deal with the short... Hang on, what is the time? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, of course there are anxieties, and according to some papers, two of the people they think was it, were involved came in through this route of seeking asylum. Came but through Greece, from Syria. But, but, most Three of the Greece. people who are escaping Syria are not ISIS. Sure. They're escaping from ISIS. And you shouldn't judge. That's the thing that I'm saying very strongly, mm. that in some ways we Muslims have to stop seeing ourselves primarily as Muslims and see ourselves more as Europeans. Mm. There's been a terrible influence of Saudi Arabia that has been allowed to corrupt us. Mm. But equally, the, the Europeans should stop casting us as Muslims first and citizens next. All of that will make a difference. And I am not, like Osama saying, you know, there, there isn't a problem, there is a big problem. But we need to be, if we're going to be calm, we also need to give some credence to the idea that uh, most of those people who are coming here are desperate. But it only takes one, Yasmin. It takes one, but and there are criminals coming in okay. every day. We're, 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 criminals come in from everywhere.
We're in danger of missing two points. First of all, there's a perfectly sound argument for having controlled borders, even if there were no terrorist attacks at all. And I don't think that using a terrorist attack as a pretext for this, this argument is, is particularly a good idea. A terrorist attack is bad in its, in, in, its, in its own right, and we respond to it in its own right. Uh, if you mean by open borders that you have a wholly undiscriminating system where people can just walk into a country without anybody That's knowing right. who they are or where they come from, then no, I think, so any, then I think any, any, any reasonable person must be against that. The really curious thing about the European Union Union is that its current policy is exactly that. People can come in unchecked, undocumented, and they can then move unchecked throughout the entire European Union because of the Schengen Agreement. That would seem to me to be crazy under any circumstances, even if there were no terrorist attacks. And I, I'd be amazed that anyone would defend that if that's what you mean by open borders. But the, 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 there is a much more serious point about this, is that what actually is IS, what is, its, what is the nature of its threat to us, and how, if it is such a threat to us, are we going to combat it? Now, I think a lot of this, the solutions to this lie not in domestic but in foreign policy. Uh, we've been most reluctant, for instance, to, to ally properly with the Kurds, uh, who've been the most effective fighters against ISIS on the ground. We've been most unwilling to ally with Iran, and we've been extremely critical of Russia, which has also been rather more effective in, in holding up the Syrian regime, which is one of ISIS's principal opponents, okay. than we have. We we might reconsider some of these things if we're serious about opposing and defeating ISIS as a, as a major force. OK. I want to bring in uh, Dr Chris Allen from our newsroom in Birmingham. Thank you very much for joining us, Dr Allen. Uh, but is there um, an answer to this? Does it lie in a change in foreign policy? Does it lie in perhaps getting rid of the Schengen Agreement, the Open Borders Agreement, and, and having um, a more rigorous approach towards people who are coming into Europe? What's your answer? Well, from listening to the discussion so far, I think what's really interesting for me is the way in which uh, we've, we've started with one thing and kind of got to something completely different. And, you know, if you look at the language that's been used, we're talking about Muslims as a blanket community around the world. So we've been talking about Muslims in Syria and Iraq in the same way we're talking about Muslims in Britain. We're talking about immigration, which is not necessarily a Muslim issue. You know, this is an issue which is quite different and distinct. But now suddenly we're talking about immigration as though it's uh, actually problematic because of Muslims coming to this country. And I think one of the things that we really need to do here is to kind of like, you know, begin to differentiate between a lot of these different debates and discussions that, that are taking place. And if we're talking about this issue around sort of uh, what's happening in Paris and what should we do, I think the message is actually one of calm. Um, you know, if we look in uh, after 7-7 and Lee Rigby and all these things, these are actually on British soil. You know, so these are things which impact, you know, Britain directly. And, you know, what we have now is something which, is, which has taken place in Paris, which is, you know, which is horrific. But is it actually going to affect us in Britain at the moment? You know, and we're talking as though now there's going to be an attack here imminently. You know, and I think that this is just very, very worrying. I think that what we need to do is we have, need to have a little bit of nuance. We need to have a little bit of calm. And I think actually one of the ways forward is to actually look at this as an intelligence issue, you know, and, and actually talk about sort of, you know, these other issues in a much more kind of balanced and nuanced way. Douglas, is it an intelligence issue? I mean, obviously not solely an intelligence issue, but, but did intelligence let everybody down? in Paris. Well, well, first, I don't think anyone or anything has been said so far in this journey lacks nuance. I think a rather patronising dismissal of the idea that it does is in another attempt, which always happens after uh, events like this, to, uh, to change the point or to limit the discussion. Actually, this is, as I say, a very, very large issue. It's a societal issue. It's a cultural issue. What happened in Paris the other night, it wasn't the first time it's happened. It goes on and on and on. It is not possible to have that discussion and, and, and police and to make sure that all sorts of elements of it we don't have. We have to have the full discussion. So would you have the, the full discussion, for is... example, about... B b before you... B j just to pick up on that point, would you have a full discussion about um, airstrikes... Not just airstrikes in Syria, because, of course, that was voted down a couple of years ago in, in the House of Commons. Well, no. It's come back here. But, no. but other things. Is it boots on the ground? Is it absolutely trying to get rid of ISIS once and for all in Syria? I said a long time ago, it's a perfectly legitimate objective. Once ISIS carries out an attack on another country, for that country to use every bit of military force it has to destroy that group. What was proposed two years ago was not that. What was proposed two years ago were punitive strikes against the Assad regime. You may, you may agree with that or not. I actually disagreed with punitive strikes against the Assad regime because I thought it would topple the Assad regime and meant that we would own Syria when we didn't want to own Syria. But strikes against ISIS 
obviously are legitimate. As for quickly the surveillance uh, uh, issue, uh, y you can have all of the surveillance in the world and things like this can still happen. You will never be secure enough that a barbarian will not get hold of a Kalashnikov somewhere and go and massacre people for the crime of going to a restaurant. You will never have enough surveillance. So, and we should not blame security services either here or in Paris for not being able to prevent that happening at any time, all the time. Can, all right, I, Osama, can, I, can I just hear from Osama, because I haven't heard from him for a while. Is, is it about then taking a different approach, as far as we're concerned, in foreign policy towards Syria, going in there and going in there a lot harder than, than anyone has done? And I, th I think we should call a spade a spade. In Syria, you have a brutal regime of Assad, which has killed over 200,000 people. And we have a brutal group like ISIS, murdering uh, thousands of people also, uh, mainly Muslims. We, we need a political solution t to Syria to end the war. But what uh, as is well that as Iraq. political solution? W well, there are talks going on in Vienna. There are so many powers. The reason we haven't allied with uh, the Kurds as much is because Turkey is an ally and opposed Indeed, to the yeah. Turkish group, for example. Uh, and of course there are obvious problems with Iran and Russia supporting Assad. But coming back to an earlier point, we do need that debate to continue. You mentioned Charlie Hebdo correctly. A lot of Muslims falsely thought that these were blasphemous cartoons depicting the, the, the Prophet. Uh, within a year, I think opinion has moved on amongst British and European Muslim communities because, for example, <coughs> Charlie Hebdo also published a cartoon about Eilan Kurti, the boy who was drowned, a cartoon about the Russian plane that was brought down by a bomb, which many Russians were offended by. And so people are beginning to understand that, uh, uh, you know, many people get offended by the unique satirical nature of Charlie Hebdo. I, we have to continue that discussion so that people uh, don't sympathise with these kinds of murderers anymore. Oh. And we're moving in the right direction in, in Britain and Europe. We have to continue So that, have open, honest conversations. Yes, citizenship. Also, yes, so I, I really do want to give some credit to um, uh, the security services here. I know for a fact, and, and, and the police too, that some terrible disasters have been prevented. They don't talk about them. They can't talk about them sometimes. The, the downside of that is too often blameless Muslims are held without charge and so on, and that needs to change. I think we have to maintain those rights. But there has been some good work done by people to keep us safe, so we shouldn't dismiss what, what they've been able to do. Don't overrate these organisations. James Bond is fiction and so is spooks. There's very there's surprisingly little they can do, and they, they, the fundamental thing they're not and never will be is clairvoyant. They simply can't tell what's going to happen before it happens. <laughs> and the idea that by, by intense surveillance and, and more and more uh, poking into our lives they will do so is, is what false. What is the answer then, Peter? Well, it, it, why are we always looking for the answer? What well, we Answer, what we, what, what we, what, what, if, 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 if there had been a plane crash, we would get hold of the flight recorders and we would look to see what, would, what had happened in detail and we would in detail work to ensure it didn't happen again. The same should be done here. What is actually going on? The, the, what, what should we actually be preventing? What should we actually be fighting? What should our foreign policy be? Particularly what our foreign policy would be. We, beginning from September the 11th, 2001, we found a stupid foreign policy towards this part of the world which has caused far more trouble than it's solved. To, to, to continue to believe that tanks, bombs, airstrikes and, and boots on the ground will solve this problem okay. when it's failed over all this length of time seems to me all to right. be incredibly stupid. Thank you for that. You've been sending us a lot of texts and tweets this morning. Tommy? Yes, thank you, Sean. Yes, clearly a very emotive subject and thank you for all the messages. Here are just some of them. Ian on Facebook says, Britain should stay out of other countries' business. It's simple. Always wanted to poke our noses in. It's causing more hate and more problems. Elaine makes a point that Peter Hitchin made today. It says, there should be no panic and no knee-jerk reactions and she goes on to say that we should not allow them to divide and conquer either by blaming Muslims for this. Sue says, would it not be sensible to stop those who travel to Syria from re-entering the UK? Let them know that if they go, they will not be able to return. Bruce says, if we challenged anti-Muslim sentiment, would we deprive Islamic extremists of a vital nutrient without which it cannot flourish? And we've just had this video sent in from Paul. In order to get this right at its root, one has to reform Islam. In much the same way that Christianity has been reformed, Islam needs a reformation. And without that, it's going to carry on recruiting lots of these suicide bombers, because in the end of the day, they are following what they believe is written down. Islam needs reform, Sean. That's what Paul Thank says. Thank you very much. I want to pick that up with, uh, with Chris, who joins us from our Birmingham studio. 
What do you th make of that last comment about is Islam needing reforming and that's the way forward? Well, I always, I always find it interesting that uh, non-experts um, can actually tell other religions what they need to do. Um, it's like, I've, you know, I'm not a theologian for you know, Judaism, so I wouldn't tell you know, the Jewish faith what it needs to do. I think that you know, a lot of people kind of take these things on and they hear these debates about reformation of Islam. I mean, what, what would that actually do? You know, religions change and they do, you know, evolve and they develop over, over many years, not just you know, over centuries. You know, these are constantly changing. What we have here is, and, and picking up on some of the points from previous, is that actually, you know, we, we, if we, you know, if we get rid of Islamic State, if we bomb Islamic State, will we create a void which is going to be filled by other extremists? You know, if we look back to our own government um, in December 2013 and the Extremism Task Force, at that time um, the, the British government was talking about the great threat coming from Al Qaeda. You know, so once Al Qaeda, you know, moves on, we get a new ideology so which what fills would, it. What would you do, Chris? Sorry to interrupt, but we also heard yeah, there, sure. um, you know, that there are more than 700 British people who've gone out to Syria and 400 or so have come back. Does that not give you cause for concern? Well, I think it is concerning, um, but I think one of the things that we, 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 we've got um, uh, legislation in place where actually uh, my understanding is that when people come back from Iraq or Syria, that they're actually, they can be arrested. So there's questions around why is the legislation not being used and why is the policy not there. I think one of the things that we, we've actually um, done which is, which is wrong is, is this idea that we can actually kind of de-radicalise people here in this country. You know, right. if you look over, you know, right back to New Labour in the, the post-77 period, you know, we've had this huge investment from the British government in this kind of prevent agenda of trying to, you know, t take people off and make them, you know, sort of much more moderate Muslims, if that's even a term. I mean, what, what do we mean by this? And I think that actually this, okay. this hasn't worked. You know, this has just <coughs> been sort of, you know, bringing Muslim organisations to the table that agree with government, rubber stamping, you know, right. uh, government ideas. Thank so, you. Chris Allen is, is pushing a particular point of view here. But it's not one I agree with. Um, reformation of Islam, whatever that means, would mean that when an attack like this happened, there was no legitimacy whatsoever for it happening. And the problem is, and let me give you a very quick example. Take uh, late last year, that young Jordanian pilot whose plane came down and he was burned alive in Syria by these ISIS uh, barbarians. When that happened, Al-Azhar, the most important school of Sunni jurisprudence in Islam, <coughs> issued a, um, an, a, a criticism of this happening. But they said... By the way, they said that the people who did it should be crucified um, uh, for doing this. But they said that ISIS are indeed uh, extremist, but the problem is that they are not heretics. They are not heretics. Now, right. Uzama knows, and Yasmin knows, and everyone else here knows, <laughs> this is the central problem. I, I, Chris Allen is right on one well, thing. they are heretics. This is not... Hang on. Hang, so can I just I finish think that point? Was a mistranslation. Then, okay. What they said, but, oh, they're not non-Muslim, you can't excommunicate them. Theologically, that's a problem. But, but, and, but, but, hang you, on, let, let Osama respond to your sure. point, because it, yeah. is, is it about that sort of that clarity of message about yes. what Islam but, is? The message should be clearer, but, but the uh, theologians of Islam today are unanimous. Uh, every single one is condemning ISIS because they are killing yeah. so, well, so no, many Muslims everywhere. And, every and, 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 and Islam is going through a reformation, has been for the last okay. century and a half. Yeah, yeah, it takes centuries as a Christian one did. The yes. elephant in the room is Saudi Arabia. Yeah. The man... Uh, we treated like the king of the universe mm. a few weeks ago. Mm. If you want to know how the theology has been kidnapped, restricted, homogenized, forcibly changed from the diversity mm. that Islam enjoyed, you have to look to Saudi Arabia and some of the Gulf states. We don't want to do mm. that. No, it's very, yeah. it's, it is an enormously important point, and Yasmin is quite right to raise it, and Saudi Arabia is, apart from anything else, hugely important in the formation of British and, I might say, French foreign policy, because it is such an important mm. client, uh, a buyer of arms, and, uh, and, 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 and Reforming general. Saudi Arabia okay. will help Sorry. Muslims Sorry. worldwide. All right. But certainly. It, it certainly the, needs the point is, is that this thanks. civil war is now here, and that is the problem. Thank you to all of you, and thank you for all your comments. Wow. What an interesting debate, what an interesting interaction. And I've really learned a lot just by listening to every one of the speakers because I, for one, am always uh, attentive because I'm always ready to learn because I believe uh, Douglas himself is someone that is very articulated, just like every one of the speakers. So I believe they are always ready to say the truth and stand by the truth. So based on the facts they have stated uh, in this video, we all understand that uh, Britain 
uh, is a country that promotes uh, multiculturalism. They are always ready to welcome uh, anyone into their country, provided uh, you meet uh, uh, the, the, the terms. So I believe they are showing love to the world. And I, I, I appreciate them for that. I also believe that there should be uh, a better policy in order to be able to, uh, you know, know those that is coming into the country and to be able to check the background of those that is coming into the country. I understand Douglas' points, talking about uh, Islam, talking about the Muslim, because we understand that currently right now there have been a lot of, uh, even those videos have been, have been made more than two years, more than three years, more than four years ago. But currently right now, the problem Douglas and every one of the speaker is talking about in this video is happen is happening presently right now. You can talk about uh, Islamist extremism. You can talk about uh, Islamist fundamentalists and every one of those. So I believe even if this video have been made more than three or four years or five years from now, the problem that they are trying to address in this video is still happening presently right now. And I believe the major problem is about people coming into the country, people coming into the country, there should be a better way in order to be a better policy, a better law, in order to be able to assess those that is coming into the country so the wrong people don't come into the country with uh, uh, with, uh, with bad motives because I believe that is the major problem. And Douglas Murray, not just Douglas Murray, uh, there have been a lot of debate talking about the problem of uh, mass immigration, the problem of integration, which I believe is a major problem. If people are coming into your, if people are coming into uh, the country, there should be a better way in order to be able to check the people and also check the background of the people that is coming in. I know it's not a bad thing to uh, accommodate people. It's a very good thing to show love to people in order to welcome them to your country, in order to be able to provide a better life for them. It's, uh, I believe that, that that is a very good thing, and I appreciate uh, Britain for that, because they have been doing a lot in, in regarding uh, accommodating immigrants. But I also believe that a proper, back, a proper background check should be made on the people that is coming into the country, and even when they come into the, into the country, a better system, a better policy to be set in place in order for them to be able to integrate. We all understand that our immigrants coming into a country can bring a lot of economic benefit to the host country, and at the same time, they can bring uh, a lot of harm to the host country if not properly managed, if they are not ready to integrate. And I see this as a major problem because people come into the country with their own culture, cultural difference, with their own tradition, with their own value system, and they fail to integrate. I see that as a major, I see that as a major problem. A system should be set in place in order to be able to be in order to be able to properly manage those that is coming into the country in order to be able to uh check uh have a proper check of the background of those that is coming into the country because we all know uh britain as a country that is ready to welcome immigrants a lot of people will take that as an advantage to flee to flee from uh, uh the crimes that have committed in their own country and they see britain as a safe heaven in order to be able to perpetrate all sort of crime, which I believe that is totally unacceptable. So based on the point every one of the speaker have stated and based on the point Douglas Murray have stated in this video, I totally align uh, with the fact Douglas have stated. I believe the major problem is about how immigrants is managed and how they are able to integrate in their host country. I see that as a major problem because in a situation whereby you are fleeing from your own country because of uh, the oppression or because of the war or because of the disaster happening in your own country or because of you have been maltreated in your own country in your own country without being given freedom of speech freedom of expression and you coming into another country whereby they are giving you accommodation at the end of the day uh the 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 the, the tradition the culture you are running away in your own country, you come into a different country and you are trying to bring your own culture, your own tradition, your own value system into that country and try to impose it on the people. I see that as totally wrong. I see that as totally wrong. So I believe 
a, bro a better system, a better policy should be set in place in order to be able to uh, do a proper background check of those that is coming into the country. So to make sure the right people are coming into the country and not terrorists and not uh, the wrong people. Because if uh, people are coming, if immigrants are coming into a country, I believe they bring, they bring a lot of economic benefits to the host country. But we don't also have to forget that they, they can also bring a lot of harm to the host country if they fail to integrate, if they are not properly managed. Wow, I've really learned a lot just by listening to every one of the speakers and also listening to Douglas. So I also like to hear your comment based on the fact the speakers have all stated in this video. Let's get the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day. Thank you.